You know, Mike, you asked Mark Spears a great question. You really did. When you said, you know, Kobe would want us to talk about basketball. And what storyline, what NBA storyline would he be interested in? And Spears said his players changing teams. But you know what I would love to hear Kobe Bryant talk about? The Lakers. You know, mm -hmm. the Lakers won the championship last year, and it was about Kobe. It is, it is a part of their championship rings. The Mamba mentality is part of their championship rings. LeBron, LeBron James won his first championship as a Laker. Anthony Davis, who some uninformed commentators once called a loser, um, won his first championship with the Lakers. And now you've got championships with Kobe knows about, and then you've got this mission to defend it or to start piling up championships in Los Angeles. I would love, oh, tell me you wouldn't love it. These two storytellers, these two giants, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, I would love for them to be in conversation, not just about the Lakers and basketball, but social justice and storytelling and going from high school to the pros and trying to convince people that just because you're 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 well over six five, six six in the case of uh, Kobe, six eight in the, in the case of LeBron, just because you're big and black doesn't mean that all you can do is put a ball in the basket. Oh, I would love, I yeah. would love to have them in conversation. Yeah, he um, he would have definitely found a uh, a unique and an original way of attacking these conversations. You know, uh, he definitely wouldn't have sat it out. He would not have sat, sat not he would not have sat this summer out, not this year out. I mean, who knows what he'd have, what he'd have been doing in the fight against COVID? Um, who knows what role he would have played in the election? Um, just potential, man. That's that's the real tragedy of it all. And you talk about social justice too. That's the other. That's the that's the heartbreaking thing about you know, the issue of um, police brutality against black people is the, you know, it's not just the, the act. It's not just the, the, the snuffing out of a life. It's the potential that goes with it. It's like, right. That's right. You know, what could, what could that young man or woman have been? What could they have done? Or what could the next generation that they produced have done? Just, we just never know. And so we, with Kobe and, and Gigi in particular, like Gigi, man, like, you know, I look at Savannah, again, same age. And there isn't anything Savannah can't do. Uh, she has gifts that I can't even comprehend that, that, that only came from God. They ain't come from me. They may yeah. come from my mother, too. Um, I was going to say, there's a uh, mom. There's mom in it. Yeah, it, just, it, it came from my mom. They did, they all, every, all the good stuff came from my mom. Her bad habits came from me. Um, but I just think about Gigi and what she she could have been, and, and not just with her own talent and her, and her talent and her own drive, but how he, where he was going to push her and where he was going to guide her. My one of my favorite videos, and, and you know it, it gets played a lot today, is when they're courtside and he's just educating her and informing her Point, yeah. on the game yeah. or just pointing out the, the game. And I'm just like, oh, my God, like that's that's the kind of relationship you want to have. That's the kind of conversation you want to talk about being in conversation. You want to be in conversation when you have your daughter's attention. Um, you know, I like I like to say all the time that fathers, uh, you know, we're responsible for how our sons treat women how they view women and we're responsible for how our daughters expect to be viewed and demand to be viewed and treated by men. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, we have this awesome responsibility and, and he seemed to really uh, embrace that. I mean, just think about, you know, and I, and I mentioned Elle Duncan earlier. She's a, a good friend of mine, sports center anchor. And we talked just the other day. I mean, she told the amazing story of their backstage conversation at upfronts in New York city that went viral and it spawned girl dad and think about how girl dad is just part of the lexicon now it's just part it's just it's just like a common phrase it's, it, and, and how so many people leaned into 
the, the, the notion of being a girl dad. That's from Kobe. He inspired, he inspired fathers. You know? Yeah, so, I, I mean, yeah. Mamba mentality is just, it, it's transcended. It has transcended what it was initially about and become just universal. It's universal. It's like you have a mama mentality when it comes to being a parent. You know, when it comes to being a any anything you that that you're devoting yourself to. You know, so I, I don't know, man. It's just, yeah, I, I think yeah. The dudes, the dudes are incredible. So and I'm telling you, I think I want to tell you this before. Sorry, I, I we, right. we were talking about another subject a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, remember I told you I was gonna tell you a, t- a story about Kobe. Uh, oh, we're talking about acquired tastes. I'm telling you, man, like, I did not dig Kobe as a commentator. I did not dig Kobe. I was, you know, like the, like the hero ball and the, and, 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 and the, the shoot first and ask questions later. And, and you know, it just, I, I, didn't, I didn't appreciate his game the way that I should, and I, and I, or the way that I should have. And maybe it got to do with the fact that he became older and lovable and wiser. And in his old age, he became this elder statesman. And again, this ambassador and this, this evangelist, as many Goodwill called him. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Maybe I got older and I finally got hip. But, I, but that feels like such a distant memory. I don't even remember those days. I don't, rem- I don't remember the days of criticizing Kobe. You know, it's, it's so weird to look back on that and be like, man, like, what was I thinking? You know, it was like, I don't know. Maybe I just, I don't know. But we're here now. And so. I'm sorry. What were you about? No, 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 no. I was going to say um, uh, to your Mamba mentality point. The the great thing about it is it's Mamba mentality. So it's it's not. Hey, when you go out on the court, make sure you can cross the guy over. Make sure you can go left or right. It's, it has nothing to do with basketball. It does and it doesn't. <laughs> so you can use that Mamba mentality on on anything that you do. Or you can use yeah. that approach. And so I, I think that's why that's why it's such a that's why it's resonating like this. You know, they do, we, we've lost basket, we've lost great athletes in the last 12 months. It's staggering. The great athletes yeah. that we've lost across a number of sports. You know, you think about you know, Bay, we just lost Hank Aaron, and just like Aaron, so many yeah. uh, great baseball hall of famers. It's like so many great athletes who have passed. But what 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 stands out about Kobe, I think part of it was playing in Los Angeles, clearly, you know, playing for the uh, for the Los Angeles Lakers and, and being a champion. But it is doing all those other things away from basketball. That really uh, capture people jump out to people. And, and the reason I I said I really would like to hear a conversation between LeBron James and Kobe Bryant, because that's a lot of that's a lot of experience. And I actually think that one activated the other. I mean, they're from different eras and they yeah. they they played at the same time, but they're from different eras. You know, Kobe's this this rookie in 1996 and LeBron is still seven years away from playing his first NBA game. Yeah. So when so Kobe's era was really he was getting in with Michael. That was that type yeah. of the, the way that it, it was a type of basketball, the type of basketball was different. The yeah. type of basketball commentary from basketball players was different. It wasn't like this. I think Kobe's approach, I think he sparked LeBron. And now LeBron is that guy that we're talking about. LeBron is that, hey, I'm growing into my voice. I got a story to tell. Yeah. There's so much more than basketball. Don't try to define me here. But I think Kobe pushed him there. Well, it's interesting. And I would Kobe, love to have I would love to hear them talk about it. I mean, on the court, I, I, I love his take. I love his take on the Clippers. I mean, if you just want to like <laughs> simplify it and bring it all the way down to just <laughs> like, I want to know what he thinks about the Nets. I want to know what he thinks about the Clippers. All yeah. of it. I mean, you know, but to your point about it's interesting. I, I would say I would say of the of the current generation, I would say him and Allen Iverson. There's an affection. And, a, and an adoration and an admiration for those two that I think just far and away more than anybody else. And it's weird. It's like, you know, again, Kobe 
unabashedly and was unashamed of like, I'm trying, to, I'm literally trying to be like Mike. Down to the footwork, down to the way I walk, the way I talk, everything I do is going to be like Michael Jordan. And for somebody to, to make, a, make his legend being somebody else or being like somebody else is fascinating because in his own right, there was nobody like Kobe, even though he, he set out to be just like somebody else in everything that he did. And, and, in, and in turn, so many people that follow Kobe actually want to be like Kobe. Like, the kids want to right. be Kobe, you know? Um, it's, it's just, you can't, you can't say enough about him. And um, I think another thing is just that he was flawed. He wasn't perfect. He did have missteps. Lots of them. Colorado, obviously. Satan the obvious, you know? Um, and, and, and not to say he's to be celebrated for those missteps or absolved of those missteps. I'm simply saying that I think that just made him more human, um, than I think we, like it, it was, he was, he was godlike in, in, in his iconic status, but human just the same, you know, and, and it went and went. On, along his journey, he was he was anti-hero before he was hero. Mm -hmm. You know, he's anti-hero before he was hero. He was, uh, he, he just he evolved. People, that's why I said nobody was ever neutral about Kobe. You know, you, I mean, I, there were there are people that went from hating him to loving him in their lifetime. You know, or and, right. or loving him to hating him to loving him. Well, you know, we've talked a lot about him off the court and his impact. How about in basketball? I don't even want to say legacy, mm. but just say okay. as a just basketball straight up player. Points, because points, I, championships. You know, yeah, I know, right? I, yeah. I, I, I've heard, I've heard uh, Michael Eric Dyson say many times, greatest basketball player ever is Kobe. That's his guy. He's uh, like He thinks Kobe is... is, is He's dramatic. a Kobe guy? Okay. Yeah. He's a Kobe guy. Yeah. Now, I, I know that is a... Maybe that's a popular thing in L.A., but outside of the, as you as you go, um, you know, east of Los Angeles, the more you know, the more you keep coming east of LA, I think it's probably more an MJ LeBron crowd. I don't know. But do you did you ever look at Kobe that way? Do you look at him that way now and say he's like? The, do you rank him in your top all time top five? Is he number two? Is he number six? Like, do you how do you look at him as a player? No, no, I got you. I got you. Man, oh man, I, you know, it's funny you say that because whenever we talked, and by, by we, I mean media, whenever we talked about Kobe, I mean, excuse me, LeBron versus MJ, I always love the people, I, I sincerely love the people who would jump in and be like, wait, how y'all just skipping over Kobe? Like y'all just skipping over Kobe Bryant. And, and, that's, and that's with apologies to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or even Bill Russell, if you prefer. It would always be, well, what about Kobe? Before, before LeBron can reach Jordan, he got to pass Kobe. And I'd always be like, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. you got a point there, you know? I, I, so you know, whether you want to do top fives or Mount Rushmore, I don't know. I'm too emotional today right now to answer that question with a clear head. Uh, I don't think you can have a conversation about the greatest basketball players of all time without mentioning Kobe Bryant. What number you assign to him, I think it's a matter of preference. I think, I think, I think if you, if you, but I, the reason I like, and I like a lot of things that Michael Eric Dyson says, the reason I like when Michael Eric Dyson says it is it's like, okay, tell me he's the best of all time. That's saying something. Because I think, I think after Jordan. I mean, look, won, I mean, look at those accomplishments. I mean, look at, the, look at those accomplishments. <laughs> I think, you know, I think after Jordan, I think at the Jordan that won, Michael, if some people have LeBron too, some people have Kareem too, whatever. But once you get to like the two, three, four, five, whatever that is, like, yeah, kinda, they're interchangeable. They're interchangeable, right. It's like the statement is who's number one. And so if you want to make a statement, you say Kobe's number one. I'm not willing to go there, but you don't have to count too high before you get to him. What were you about to say? 11-time all-first-team all-NBA. <laughs> I 
right? Because you can you can you can play certain certain stats you can play games with. So yeah. when when a guy has a bunch of all star appearances, I kind of shrug at that. Yeah. All right. So you got like twelve all star appearances, fifteen. That 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 can mean a lot of things. I, I'm not sure that tells the story. First team All NBA, that tells the story. Uh, I don't know where he's on the All Defense team. Uh, that tells the story. Fourth most points in NBA history. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to ignore that. Yeah. And, and I think uh, if, if you go back and forth, yeah, you can come up with reasons for why he's not number one, but you can't, this is what you can't do now. Maybe 10 years ago, probably longer, what year is this? 21? Okay. Uh, 21, yeah. Maybe a, a, a 11 years ago, 11, 12 years ago, you could just dismiss it. Oh, no, no, no. Now you can't dismiss it. You look at the, the accomplishments and the championships because for a while it was he wasn't getting the, the due that he deserved because Shaq had oh, left. and he 12-time so all-defensive team. Right. 12-time all-defensive team. 12 times. Either first or second so, or yeah. first. First and first second. team all defense. I, I I count those up. Keep keep talking. I'll, I'll all right. That's first and so, second, but so, I'll, I'll count those up real quick. Right when now. they had that three peat, when they had that three peat, mm -hmm. Shaq was the Finals MVP each of those championship years. So if you wanted to uh, nitpick a little bit, uh, uh, nitpick mm -hmm. a little bit, you'd say, all right. Well, they won they won these championships, and Shaq was the best player in the finals. So wh what has he won without Shaq? I count nine, by the way. I count nine, nine, nine first, first team. team all defense and three second team all defense. It's a good discussion. It's a good discussion. I haven't thought about it enough. I'm going to be honest with you. He was not, when I go by, by top, you know, top three, top four, he wasn't in there. I didn't think about it enough. A guy who can score like that and defend like that, you know, that's my thing, Mike. That's why, you know, certain certain players I don't give a lot of love to now because they're yeah. just they're specialists. Scoring specialists, but a complete player. He's incredible, man. All right. Yeah, so he, uh, won break two time. he won his two finals MVPs oh. without Shaq. And I think, yes. you know, that changes the conversation too. It shouldn't, yes. but it does in the NBA. It always comes back to that in the NBA. What did yes. you do? How many championships did you win? How many finals MVPs did you have? You, you ever seen that gift where he court finals MVPs? You ever seen that gift where he, where, he, where he court side and he's like, just letting somebody know I got five of them things, like five of them things, you know? Yeah, so man. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.